reaches 10 o'clock, we are standing by with those crucial exit poll figures. Here they are. The exit poll is something of a shock, but not in the sense that it tells us a story we weren't expecting, just that it tells us a particularly extreme version of a story we were expecting. So the exit poll is right at the upper end of the estimates we were getting from polling before election day. It suggests we're going to get a much larger conservative majority than we might have expected if we'd sort of split the difference and gone in the middle of the polling estimates in the run-up to election day. So that means, obviously, it's a good night for the Conservatives. It's a rather more depressing night for Labour than they might have expected. Though, of course, it, we will have to wait until the morning to be absolutely certain of the outcome. What this election shows is that the British electoral system has returned to its usual pattern of giving a strong reward to a party that's well ahead of a fragmented opposition. The gap between Conservative and Labour has widened and, and that's given Boris Johnson a landslide uh, victory. So we have a both a generational gap between young people who tend to be much more remain uh, and older people more leave and also a sort of socio-economic gap that's much more about education and also a geographical gap which is about sort of towns and rural areas versus big metropolitan cities. So the question is, where does the Labour Party go now? Does it uh, find a new leader? It seems that Corbyn has to probably resign quite soon. But who replaces him is a much more open question, and there are no obvious candidates. Maybe Keir Starmer could be a kind of pragmatic alternative from a more kind of centre position. But of course, there are other people like Rebecca Long-Bailey and other people on the left who will be seeking to uh, uh, take over from Corbyn and keep going with the project of Labour as a party rooted in left-wing values. Although Johnson is obviously going to be celebrating a great success in the scale of this majority, it does bring challenges. And one of the things that's not clear about him is one, you know, what ultimately does he want to achieve? He travels light ideologically, his manifesto is fairly thin, and now he has a lot of power, but also a lot of responsibility. And what does he really want to do on big questions like the future of the union? So I think we could be in for um, surprisingly interesting times, um, despite the transition now from um, hung parliaments and minority governments to a thumping great majority. Well, here we are in the Shakeside Theatre, the end of the LSE's election night event. Everybody's gone home. The results, of course, are still pouring in. And this election really is like no other, in the sense that it's produced an expected result. The pollsters were right. And what it has told us is that the Conservatives are likely to win by a significant majority. So Britain will have five years of stable government. The Labour Party will have to stop and think about what this tells it about, how it needs to be competitive. Brexit's going to happen on the 31st of January, and so that's rather the end of anybody hoping for a second referendum and vote to remain. That's all gone now. But I think the most intriguing aspect of this evening, particularly given how well the Conservatives are doing in the north of England, and they'll probably do rather better in the south of England, suggests that there is a realignment going on within British party politics. So Labour and the Conservatives are still going to be the biggest parties. They're going to win 75, 76, 77 percent of the vote, but their voter base is going to be different. And that will change British politics, not just tonight, but in the long term.